for myself, the prairie has always been, um, what it meant to me as a child was the openness, the great, the great, great plains. And I was a kid that was really interested in astronomy and in the city there was a problem with houses and especially street lights. And I used to hunt with my dad uh, in the prairies for pheasant, not particularly hunting, but I just, wanted, I just went to kind of look around and always wanted to have an observatory in the prairies. And this actually inspired me uh, to travel in the Canadian Barrens. Like Will Steger, the prairie biome has fascinated many, including ecologist John Tester. It must have been like a sea of grass. It must have just gone from where the person was standing all the way to the horizon. And if the wind was blowing, the grass would have been waving and it would have looked just like the surface of, of the ocean. The prairie flowers uh, are spectacular when you get close to them, but when you look at the prairie from a distance, it just all looks green and it's because of the grass. The grasses make up oh, 80 to 90% of the plant material on the prairie. So I think the sea of grass is, is probably a pretty valid description. While the windswept prairie once covered about half of Minnesota's land area, today less than 1% remains. Many of the prairie's 150 to 250 native plant species are now rare, mere remnants of a diverse ecosystem dependent upon complex, hidden processes for its regeneration. The prairie is based on disturbance. It needs disturbance, several different kinds. Fire is perhaps the most important, but disturbance of the soil by buffaloes where they would wallow, uh, disturbance by pocket gophers, disturbance by badgers digging up pocket gophers. This is all part of the, the natural history of the prairie. Of these disturbances, prairie fires played the most important role, whether caused by lightning or set by Native Americans to improve conditions for game. As farmers have long known, fire releases nutrients from dead plant material. While deep root systems protect prairie plants from damage by fires, non-native plants and trees that spread onto the prairie from nearby forests and fields are unable to survive. If you would look carefully at both above ground and below ground parts of the prairie, you'd realize that about 80 percent of the plant material is underground in the root system of the prairie plants. They add to the organic matter in the soil and that's what's made our prairie soil so rich and black. This rich prairie soil supports a vast agricultural economy that has played an essential role in feeding a growing nation. But this abundance has come at a cost to Minnesota's prairie ecosystem, which once included millions of acres of wetlands. Wetlands made it difficult for farming, and the pattern had been for the wetlands to be drained, um, sometimes by open ditches, sometimes by tile lines. And today, in some counties, in, especially in the southwestern part of Minnesota, there are no wetlands left, and there would have been thousands of wetlands there during the days before settlement. The draining and filling of wetlands has destroyed habitat for the many thousands of migratory waterfowl that have relied on prairie wetlands for millennia during their annual transcontinental migrations. The disappearance of wetlands has also accelerated the runoff of rain and melting snow. Draining the land faster has in some cases meant increased flooding and erosion. Dr. Jennifer Powers is studying the impacts of climate change on the prairie biome. Some of the great uncertainties um, or the, the big unknowns that we have are how ecosystems might respond to, um, to increases in, in temperatures. Uh, and so we started this project several years ago in order to better understand the responses of um, prairie ecosystems to predicted climate warming. What we're doing is using uh, infrared heat lamps um, which we hang over what looks like a frame for a swing set. We hang these lamps over um, patches of prairie vegetation that differ in the species composition, um, the, the numbers of species and the types of species, and these lamps actually warm a patch of the ecosystem in the field. Um, so we can evaluate these effects of climate change in the most sort of um, natural setting as, as possible. But our study is the first to overlay this, this treatment of warming over um, 
different combinations of plant species, um, the types of plant species, and the diversities of plant species. And so in that way, our study is unique that we'll be able to look at how the effects of warming on ecosystem processes depend upon the species that are present and the number of species, the mixes of species. Um, and so in that way, I think by overlaying this question of what happens when you warm an ecosystem um, with the question of do these responses depend on the types of prairie species that are there, it will allow us to make um, larger inferences to the, um, you know, across the biome. One sort of application of the types of results that we hope to get is to understand, you know, if we want to marry, if we want to manage these um, existing small fragments in the face of ongoing climate change, what what is that going to look like? I think the question of how ecosystems respond to climate change is one of the greatest challenges that um, scientists face in the 20, 21st century. The prairie biome has an opportunity to be a leader in climate change solutions through the development of wind power. Of course, in the prairies, uh, w the wind is everything. Uh, uh, I talked to a number of farmers, um, and one farmer was talking about his grandfather complaining about the wind, and, and never, he never imagined that they'd be making their living off of the wind. It's a huge, huge possibility of wind. Uh, the transmission lines are going to be key, and I think that you know, that's part of the mix, is getting the transmission line where the wind is. And, uh, and I've seen some of the communities in southwestern Minnesota from wind and, and uh, the biomass. Uh, that Some of these communities were literally boarded up 10 years ago, and they're really thriving communities.